Hold My Drink Extra Juice with Charlene and Ellie, a Go Loud original podcast, proudly sponsored by Pennies. Get this season's must-haves in a store near you. Welcome to Home Drink Extra Juice, which is kindly sponsored by Prime Record Pennies, the ultimate high street destination for all of your needs. Now the album's arrived, it's the perfect time to reset and refresh your wardrobe, whether it be going back to school or college, starting a new job, or looking to add some key pieces to your autumn winter wardrobe. Whatever the occasion, large or small, they really do have it all, from denim to classic trench coats, trending maxi skirts to flattering jumpsuits, Primark's new hero pieces will have your autumn style covered. We're actually I'm wearing a little Penny's jumper right now. It's beautiful. I love it. So, so, I love the knitwear. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and they're chunky boots for winter and all. Yes. Mm-hmm. We went in and bought actually lovely cowboy boots, didn't we? Well, I did. You did, yeah, back. yeah. I got like beige suede kind of ones at heel. Yeah? Yeah. Love. They're fab bits. Head to your local store or log on to www.primark.com forward slash IE. Check out all our rotten pieces and see what's in your local store with the new stock finder. This is our bonus episode where we answer even more of your dilemmas and try to help you with things that might be happening and going wrong in your life and give you the advice that you need to hear. So these are all sent into our email address. So it's homeydrink at goloudnow.com and this is the only way we take dilemmas in for the segments and not your DMs. They're always anonymous and also we post clips on the Home or Drink Instagram page. So it's Home or Drink Pod on Instagram and on TikToks as well so you can give your feelings and advice in the comments. If we miss anything, if we misjudge the situation yeah if we get let it us wrong know. yeah, yeah. Let us know. we're open to learning yes yeah. first one is hey girls love the podcast i listen to it every week and genuinely makes time fly on my drive home oh she's probably driving right now listen hey yeah hey yeah <laughs> i've been with someone for six plus years we have been we have had one or two breaks but it's genuinely just because we're so young and over stupid reasons we're 23 and 24 now and things are better than ever We both started new jobs. I can't remember how, but this girl that he works with came up in a few conversations. Let's call her Mary. Mary! 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 He mentioned her a few times at work-related things, and she was always mentioned any time they went to a staff after party. The name was just flagged at me because it had been mentioned so much. Meanwhile, I know a girl that they work with, and she put a picture up with their whole staff on Insta. I couldn't help but notice that this girl Mary stood out, and she was absolutely stunning. Now, the names are mentioned a few times, but I've just ignored it. But recently, there was a work event that suddenly came up. They are part of a committee in work, three of them. So my boyfriend and Mary happened to be the only two out of three that had to go to this event together. He never mentioned who was going, just said he had to go. He came to my house afterwards and when I was trying to talk to him, he was so spaced out on his phone. I asked him what he was doing and he was sending notes from the meeting. I asked him, could he do this when he left me as he'd just been at the meeting with her and he said no. Now I asked him to do something this Wednesday night and he said he might have a night out with four of his staff. The both of them are two out of four staff. Am I overthinking this or is something to worry about? Thank you so much. I feel like stuff like this, like work things, if your boyfriend was in a, in a group at work, it's so easy to be like, well, they're obviously shagging. I know. It's so easy for your mind to automatically go there. But also does the name flag for a reason? Like, why is he, why did he always bring her up? But also I'm like, if you always bring her up, well, work with her like. You know, but also would you not be trying to like hide someone? If yeah, you're true actually. More so. But there's not, it, it depends. You wouldn't be that open with it could mentioning be, it her. It could be either. Hmm. I, th- I feel like this is just one of those things you just have to keep an eye on. Like you can't make a judgment call on it now. I know. Like you're hoping that it's not true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What do you do? I don't know. <clears throat> I think just keep an eye on it. I wouldn't go saying stuff to him now or like... Yeah, because it comes out sometimes will push them away from yeah. you and then you'll feel even more like worried about it mm. and stuff. Um, I think next time, like the one thing I would mention to him was like sending notes from the meeting. I'd be like, here, yeah, yeah you can. Home with you, like, yeah, you can wait and yeah. do that. Like, you don't need to do that now. Like, that's, or even say to him, the other day that really pissed me off when you were sending the notes, like, I haven't seen you in ages and you're going texting that's what them. You're doing, yeah. Like, I know work's important, but like, there was no need to send them right that second. Um, and she asked him to do something Wednesday night and he said he might have a night out with four of his staff does he always have to do extra activities after work I know yeah with work people it's hard because you don't want to look you don't want to be a psycho either but like if you have a good feeling you have a good feeling Mm. I think just express it to him say it to him yeah I wouldn't say it now apart from the notes thing 
Yeah. Right, say you're... Or even, you could say, you could be like, don't, I would mention her and Janet was be like, I feel like you're with work people all the time these days. Don't see you anymore or something. You're prioritising work. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even like he's actually working, he's going to parties now. With his work. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I think, I don't think you're overthinking it, but I also don't think it's something to worry about Mm. at the moment. Right now, yeah. But I think keep an eye on it. I think when you have a, a gut instinct about something like... It's for a reason. Yeah. But also, it could be not as hard. I think just keep an eye on it. There's not much you can do now. I know. What's the worst thing that... You, We're, the yeah. worst thing you know so far is that he's mentioned her name a few times and the notes thing. Yeah, I think the notes thing you can say straight away and the maybe the worst thing, the, f- the fact about going out on Wednesday and you asked him to do something, you could be like... Could we not do something instead? And you mm. meet the staff on Wednesday. Yeah, twenty four. It's not like you could work Christmas party where you have to go that day. Yeah, but like, specific set. If you're asking them, like we should be prioritising you really. Yeah. Over a few, like three handful of work friends. Like. Yeah. So. Yeah. The next one we have then is the start of sixth year. There was a new fella in my class. I got to know him around Christmas time and we started talking. We made plans to go out anyway and the day comes. I'm sitting there ready to go and he cancels last minute. Fast forward to a month later, he asked me to go around to his and of course I drop everything and go. Just as I get into his house, the phone rings four times. I told him maybe it was important that he should pick it up. As he picks up his phone, his mom is screaming at him, asking who the girl in the house was. Anyway, I found out later on that she had seen me on the cameras that he thought he turned off. It turns out that he had knocked the fridge off instead. Oh no. Oh, all the food gone off. Okay. He asked me to the devs and we continued talking and my 18th was in June and he said he would come to my birthday the night. He said he would come to my birthday and the night of he was a no-show. Then in July he went to none other than Shagaloof and I heard that he kissed one girl and had sex with another on the beach. When he came home from his holidays he was airing me. Is that like a uh, ghost? Ghost. Yeah. He was airing me, so I just left him on scene. Then I went on my holiday and he found every way possible to claw his way back in. I continued to talk to him because I just didn't want to go on to the Debs on my own. Anyway, two weeks before the Debs, I asked him what the plans were for the day photos, if he's getting a tie to match, etc. And he left me on delivered for a week. Oh, he left me on delivered for a week and a half and then he replied with a laughing emoji. So I obviously just blocked him. So at the Debs, he was slowly dancing his way towards me and I wasn't having any of it. So I decided to get absolutely twisted. Ended up in a bad state on the floor of the smoking area in tears. And as I look up, Aww. he was stood over me watching me cry. I was eventually able to pick myself up and get back on the dance floor the second Rihanna came on. Yes. Any advice to get over the situation ship as I am still feeling like absolute shit? What an ass. Why was he standing over you looking at you crying? Asshole. Why am I just picturing him slowly dancing yeah. towards her after ditching her for the day? Like Mr. Bean coming across the floor. Like, yeah. This that childish, childish, childish. Like, wouldn't even give him the time of day. I feel like he's he might be her first experience. Of, well, maybe I'm wrong, but like in sixth year, you're 17. 16, 17. Like, maybe it's her first experience of... That. that and that oh, your first is always like the first cut is the deepest yeah yeah one of them like it's just so sad I feel like he doesn't know how to interact with girls either maybe he's a, ha, like having an nervy bee maybe he's really it's nervous weird like, laughing faces but not what I'm dead at the man ringing us <laughs> ringing him I think in the camera's wrong <laughs> I'd be scared um, oh god I think you are in love with the flakiness of him like you his on and offness with you and like is what's him fucking it over is nearly keeping you there mm. and you want him to want you yeah you can't make someone want you that doesn't want you you can't and like sometimes we have to let our own ego go hit and say yeah. you don't want me no someone else will but yeah. he doesn't but like when you so want someone to want you it's like you get blind about everything oh you get obsessed with the fact of it like yeah Um, pick up that crown <laughs> <laughs> what's that what's that quote I don't know like it, no I think just know what you're worth and like do you really want someone, want someone to want like you that, yeah. who will do that to you again treat you like that watch you cry like what like if someone is watching you cry that doesn't care about you like they're 
crazy. Yeah. Like, what? I think just take this as a learning thing and just take it day by day. Surround yourself with your friends and you'll look back and be like, thank God that didn't work out. Mm. Thank fuck because he's an ass. Yeah, you'll thank yourself in the long run. Yeah. Block him. Don't give him the time of day. Or, yeah. Well done for blocking him already, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it blocked. And just keep dancing to Rihanna. You'll be fine. Yeah. Some men like that are just gone. And he'll be, he'll probably it. be like that his whole life. Yeah. Just and not able to communicate yeah. with women. Your time is too precious to deal with people who don't want, yeah. want you. Next one is, Hi girls, I really need your help as I'm struggling with this issue completely alone. My husband called my phone on Sunday evening and he came up with no caller ID. When I asked why he seemed flustered and he said he must have pressed the button by accident. I just had this gut feeling that something wasn't right, which is so weird because in seven years, we have not had one trust issue. I couldn't sleep all night. When I woke up, I went and looked at his phone logs online. I saw he called the number six times on Friday night at 1am. We were both on separate nights out and had met up briefly that night but went home separately. I called him in and asked whose number it was and he revealed it was an escort's <gasps> number. He said he was walking home looking at an escort site and tried to call. Sick thing is I called him in the middle of this and after he hung up he called again. It looks like he didn't get through. I seen him on an escort site in April and it, and it was on a page for escorts and Carrick Mines. I seen he googled straight after where is Carrick Mines but at the time I trust him so much I thought it must have been a pop-up ad or something. He tells me he used these sites as porn and that he only called to see what happened and would never have met one. I asked what we planned to say. They don't talk dirty on those lines. They arrange meetings. He kept insisting that he just wanted to feel like someone was attracted to him because he's having self-confidence issues. I just am sick at the thought of him browsing, picking someone and calling them. If he had gotten through, what would have happened? This sounds ridiculous. I trust and love him so much. We've been married for two years and I really don't want to throw that away, but am I being a mug? I know if someone told me this, I would tell them to run. I haven't told any family or friends because it's so mortifying and I feel like I just wasn't enough so much that my husband was calling an escort rather than just waiting for me to come home to have sex. He said he's always looked at these sites and that he would never actually do it, but how can I believe any he says now? He also said the medication is making him feel less of a man because he struggles with sex and now he wanted to see if he'd gone stale or he could perform with other people. I was like, what? And he, he meant just to masturbate. Makes no sense because these women don't talk over the phone. I'm absolutely distraught, but please be, don't beat around the bush. Be direct to me should I leave him. Ooh. <laughs> oh, God. She said it herself. Like, if somebody had told her this story, she'd tell them to run. Yeah. Like, if he'd have got through on the phones, what do you do? Like, if it would have been... It, it seems like one of those things, but if it would have been... If you would have been on the phone and they would have said, right, well, if like the escort would have said, okay, I can meet you here. Would, would he have gone? Went? Yeah. But also, is this a chance to like... Fix your relationship? Like? Before it actually happened. Yeah. It, it fixed him more so because I feel yeah. like it's nothing to do. He's not saying, oh, sex with you is shit, blah, blah, mm. blah. It's, he's saying he it's feels him. not attractive. He feels this and that. But like, is that something you go try to fix first and then... See if you want to reevaluate, make him feel more of a man. Like, is that something that happens? Yeah, is it? Yeah. Well, he said something about medication, did he? Yeah. I think as hard as it is, we can obviously tell you advice, but I think you need to ask someone, more, even one friend who you trust in confidence who won't say that and who... Who knows Because there's, there's always a friend who won't judge, even if you do, and who won't have a bad opinion of him. They'll just look at it from... Well, they might, but I don't know. It's hard, but I think you need to tell one person close to you because mm. they know him and the situation more than us. Right. Where you just know him as, we know both is as a nameless, faceless yeah. person. Who rang an escort. Yeah. So our first reaction is going to be like, bin him. You're, so your your choice is to break up with him and to end things and divorce or you can maybe couples therapy. Mm. therapy by himself mm -hmm. why does he feel like this why like do a deep dive in that way like maybe it's a bit of like a midlife crisis or something um, yeah why is his why is his answer to bring an escort instead yeah. of coming to you but then I'm like oh should you have to wait around for someone to, to fix themselves it's, it's I know. hard it's really difficult I think obviously if you look then it's like when you, you're willing to to wait and yeah. do it like yeah this is a toughie yeah, it is. I think what Charlene said though, like if 
you need to tell somebody in your life who knows just personally. Yeah. Somebody just c- completely in the middle. Yeah. It's so hard. I feel like such a responsibility when like you're talking about marriage, isn't it? Like I don't, I don't want to be like go stay and- together forever. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Um. But do you think it's one of those things you need to you need to work? Where you are now before making maybe it's even a thing where you take a little break and he works on himself for a mm. while and but he needs to be really if you are gonna stay together he needs to be really 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 willing to put the work in but also honest with you if he's like here I still feel shit I'm not gonna nothing's gonna change because he could say oh I'm brand new and fixed like therapy so good but then do it again that's not fair on you then yeah. but if he's honest with you the whole process and is like no do you know what I feel like more of a man I feel less stale or whatever he's calling himself like he'd need to be honest with you or else it's not going to work no yeah no the last one we have then is from a boy and it says hi girls my girlfriend's friend is super nosy and keeps asking me personal questions I feel uncomfortable asking the, answering these questions at times how do I handle this oh how personal how personal Jesus. I feel like I'm asked really personal <laughs> questions to people <laughs> I am me, I am girlfriend. Yeah. I'm just like an interviewer. It'd be like, so it'd be like me asking Dan no, real questions. personal questions. I love asking people <laughs> personal questions. I think I I don't think I have much of a filter, like you don't. sometimes. I just like asking interview style questions. Yeah, you do. Maybe like it's how? super no. I know, I wanna know I need to know like, have an example Lo- of what, yeah, like is it inappropriate know. or is it personal? Yeah. I mean I feel like it's two different things. Because what she classes a personal mightn't be per- what he does. So maybe she doesn't think it's bad what she's asking. Like personal, like she could be asking him, How much money do you make a year? Yeah. That's a personal question. Yeah, but I'd inappropriate don't... question would be like Do you like it up the bum? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, no, you have firework. firework. Oh, Christ. Um. Yeah. True. But that might just be how she is. Yeah. It depends. What like some people's personal is different to others. I think how you handle it though. Either way, whatever the questions are, is. I think laugh at her. Laugh. Like, really, you like, like, nosy bitch. Just like, ask up you. Yeah, like, like no. shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. What's she gonna say then? Oh no! Tell me. You need to tell yeah. me. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be like. You're really asking me very inappropriate. I think. Yeah. <laughs> And I think play it off because I think then she won't, she'll kind of get the vibe that you're not going to answer. Yeah. She's not going to keep on answering them, mm. asking you then. Because like. you don't want to make it awkward. Or no, weird. you know, you don't want to make it a thing out of it. Like This is definitely a situation where she doesn't think it's personal. She just thinks it's... Would you say to the girlfriend as well? I mean, like, what's the story with your mate? Like, and she might be like, ah, because it, it probably is harmless. Yeah. She could literally be like, oh. That's just how she is. Yeah. Ignore her, like, to mind her. That's just Charlene. She's just the same with me. That, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> loves it interviews everyone no, love interview people. I'd love to interview people on the bus when you're just sitting on it stuff, like yeah do you think of that if you ever yeah. sat on the bus when you're younger love to just, just just where, you where are you going yeah where are you going yeah where are you coming from there was actually I seen it on before that someone was on a bus and they were asking everyone where they're going I would like to know that or even yeah. when I see people walking around I lo- I'd love to know where are you going now why are you where off work from yeah why not work yeah yeah it's mad I think say to the girlfriend as well, like, what's the story? I feel, she makes me feel really uncomfortable. Yeah. And the girlfriend will give you good advice as well. As I was saying, obviously, laugh at it, but like she'll give you a way of handling her because I'm sure you're not the she first person her. to feel like this. Mm. So it's probably not the first situation someone's felt uncomfortable in. Yeah. I think that's the best thing to do. Definitely. Thank you for writing in. You can send your demos into howmydrinkatgoloudnow.com. Thank you for trusting us with your situations. Yeah. And I hope these are all okay. Yeah. I'm pushing through. Um, new episodes of Home I Drink Extra Juice come out every Monday and our main episodes are out on Wednesday. Thank you so much for Prime for sponsoring this episode. Thank we you. love you so much. Make sure to like, rate and subscribe and we'll see you on Wednesday. See you then. Love you. Bye. Hold My Drink Extra Juice with Charlene and Ellie. A Go Loud original podcast proudly sponsored by Pennies. Whether it's stylish savings, a new double snuddy, gym gear or some beauty bits you're looking for, Penny's is the ultimate high street destination.